Welcome friends. I am Ashutosh Kumar from 01. Today we will progress on our next lesson of theory of computation. And today we will learn FSA. That is finite state photometer. Okay. So before we get familiar to this term, now let us revise about uh, the topics that were taught in previous video lecture. And those who haven't watched my previous video, I would recommend that please watch that. Okay. So, in previous lecture, I told you about symbol, alphabet and strings. Okay. So, what is symbol was? Told you symbol could be like 0, 1, A, B or anything. Okay. What is alphabet? Alphabet is a set of symbols set of symbols so when we say a to z or 0 1 so these are set and it is denoted by sigma okay this alphabet is denoted by sigma so sigma equals to a to z this is a set sigma is this one this is also set and what are strings Strings are denoted by sigma star. So, strings are productions over an alphabet sigma. So, when we consider a alphabet say sigma equals to 0 1, we have only two symbols 0 and 1. So, what will be sigma star productions over this 0 1? So, 0 1 or 0 or 1 0 1 0 0 0 1. So, any combination of 0 1 will be a string, will be a production over this alphabet. So, what will be the sigma star? Sigma star will be basically set of all binary strings. Isn't it? And what I told you was that this sigma star can be infinite. Can be or what? It is infinite. This sigma star is infinite and every element, every element, say x. Say x is an element, okay? Say x is an element, then x belonging to sigma star. So, x is always finite. Okay. So, we restrict ourselves at the finite thing. Okay. So, x is always finite. And when I say this that x is finite, I do not mean to say that x will have an upper bound. So, suppose we have I write a string like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, by saying finite, I do not mean that we have an upper bound. We can write as much. But you know, it should be practical. It should be practical. Why? Because we are not able to enter infinite number of symbols. Are we? So, we restrict ourselves to finite thing. And that is why we term uh, what we are going to study is finite state model or finite state automata. Okay, friends. Now, we have notion of symbol, alphabet, strings and in previous video, I taught you about set membership problem. Okay. Now, let us see how set membership problem applies to our context. Okay. So, what was set membership problem? Given a set S, we had to check whether, whether an element belongs to the set or not. So, this was a set membership problem and suppose I have defined language, I have told you what language, suppose L is a language, ok. Now, L is a language defined over sigma, that is 0, 1, ok. So, what is basically language is, you know, language, we have sigma star, we have sigma star, that is a string over this alphabet, language restricts, restrict the number of elements, ok. What I mean to say that, when I apply some constraints, you know, there will be only few elements that will fall under this category. Okay. 
there will be few, few elements belonging to sigma star that will fall under this category. So what our target was that given a string as x whether it belongs to L or not isn't it? So it is it is similar to this set membership problem. So in our context we will be dealing with this. Okay. Now we will design a simple machine and when I talk about machine I mean a model. Okay. When I talk of machine, it doesn't mean any uh, machine like lathe machine or something what. It is basically a model and we will see how we are doing this. What is a machine? What is a model? Now let us con consider an example and we will be clear through the idea. Now let me define the alphabet sigma that is 0 and sigma star is there. So I define a language L this is equal to x belonging to sigma star such that okay now consider this problem this abstract problem now we have to determine a string which fall under this language now say for example when i write a string 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 what would you say yes 1 0 2 0 3 4 so we have 4 0 so this is falling under this category and when i write 0 1 1 1 you say odd number of 0 so this will fall under this category so this is a trivial problem so why we need this you know you would question so what is the need of complicating things see basically we are not complicating things what we are trying to do is that what we scan you know come the computation is like that that we scan the character one by one suppose we have a very long string and by seeing the string you are not able to figure out how many zeros are there so what are you going to do you are going to count isn't it and at the end of counting when the number of zeros are even then you say yes this will fall under this and if the number of zeros are odd then you say that this will not fall under the language okay now the way of doing is our way of doing in toc is by toc i mean theory of computation okay that we will scan a character from the very beginning till the end and we'll get the result okay so when we start scanning what we what uh, state of mind we are in okay for now we haven't scanned anything okay we haven't scanned anything that means that we have zero number of zeros isn't it so what our state of mind says our state of mind says that yes i am in even state okay and when i scan I scan this zero then we say that yes i have got one zero so our state of mind will change that now yes i am at odd state by saying this i mean that i have only two state okay that is even my state of mind is even and odd okay now we haven't scanned anything so we haven't scanned anything then we have zero number of zeros and because zero is an even number we said that we have seen even number of zeros now we have scanned the first character then our state of mind is that yes we have one zero one is odd so we are at odd position our state of mind says that we have seen odd number of zero similarly when we encounter one no change in our state of mind because we haven't encountered any zero and when again we encounter this zero what our state of mind will change it will go to even then our state of mind will have no change no change and then will go to odd and finally the state of mind is even okay so now let us formally do it okay how we are formally doing this problem now let me name uh, my mind states that is even number of zeros encountered okay so let me say this is q1 okay and odd number of zeros encountered say this is q2 so we have two states of mind isn't it and we were flipping at one point of time we were at this state 
after scanning then we got into this state and we are flipping from this two states okay so now let us let me write this is a state q1 q1 means we are at the even state and then q2 this means we are at the odd state what if we haven't scanned any character now for example take a reference of a problem okay so for what if we haven't encountered any character we haven't seen any character what will be our state of mind okay i am at even state so a arrow coming for from nowhere tells you the initial state so our initial state of mind is even and we haven't seen any zero yet so zero number of zeros and zero is even we are at the even state what if i encounter encounter one zero now the first character i have scanned so i have scanned a character zero now our state of mind will be okay why because one number of zero is one so i will go, go to odd state now i have encountered again a one so when we encounter one is there any change in our state of mind there is no change so let me write zero here so getting one do not change the state of mind now again when i if i get a zero here suppose i am at odd state so till now i have suppose say five zeros and when i receive one more zero so the number of zeros will be six so it will even again when i go to zero and what if we are at even state we encounter one again we have no change in our state of mind so finally now let us check whether this belongs to this or not intuitively this is very trivial so we can see this and say yes this doesn't belong to this let us check now when we are at we have, when we haven't encountered any character we are at this state we encountered zero so we go go to odd state we have one again one still at the odd state we encounter zero we got we get at the even state we get we have one at the same state we got zero and finally we get into the odd state so whatever problem was that we have to find a string so that even number of zeros are there so yes this string doesn't belong to this language or more formally we can say that this string is not accepted by is not accepted by language so which strings will be accepted those strings by scanning at the end of the scanning when we reach at this state isn't it after scanning all the characters when we reach at this state then we say that yes this string is accepted or this string belong to the language so i formally do it like this okay so this is the final state our target is to reach here if we reach here by scanning the characters that means the string is accepted now see this is known as the final state we will we will formalize the definitions but and what we haven't scanned any character then we are at the state we have some initial state so initial state is denoted by the arrow coming from nowhere okay and in this case we can have in this case we have only one final state and only one initial state and you know coincidentally both are same but it is possible that we have a diagram like this this is a initial state and this is a final state okay this is possible but in our context both states are same and we can have more than one final states also okay so initial state we denote initial state by qi so what will be the initial state initial state will belong to the if i say it belongs to q and q is the set of states q is the set of states so how many states do we have with this context of problem two states and in some other problem we can have more than two states so we denote the set of states as q and the initial state will obviously belong to this set of states and final state is denoted by f and this final state is a subset of q isn't it because those final states will be one of them from this q okay so we have one or more than one final state that will belong to this q now let us formalize this definition okay so we have drawn this and what we have drawn this is actually what we call as model okay what we call as model or machine so what this model is doing this model is solving a class of set members a problem isn't it 
we were discussing in the previous tutorial that we want to solve a class of problem so here the idea is clear isn't it we have a class of problem and this model is telling that yes this is this uh, whether a string belongs to this or not so what we are doing we are preparing a model we are creating a model to solve a class of membership problem okay so our lecture will be devoted to this only and this class of model or this model we term as what is called finite state model or finite state automata or finite state machine in our context what is see sigma star is infinite but every element belonging to sigma star is finite and to this problem we say that we have a deterministic finite model okay deterministic finite state model okay we have several others but we'll restrict our to deterministic finite state model now now let us formalize all those things to make the idea very clear okay so for that problem we draw our machine like that this is q1 this is q2 and encountering a zero we get here then i encounter one i remain here when i encounter zero i go here one this was the initial state and again this was the final state okay now let us analyze this what can we figure out is that we have certain features one is q what is q it is set of all states the states that we have so we formalize by saying that q is the set of all states and then we have a sigma what is sigma see the alphabets 0 1 so here the in this case our sigma is 0 and 1 and one more important thing is this delta what is this delta this delta is basically mapping isn't it see we receive a symbol at some state and go at another state or we remain at one state so what we are doing after receiving a sim symbol at some state either we are going to another state or remaining at the same state so this is the mapping for of states okay we will be clear through this idea when we draw the transition table okay and again we have an initial state say qi is termed as the initial state in this case q1 is the initial state so qi will belong to q and we have a set of final state f which is a subset of what do we say q isn't it so we have 1 2 3 4 and 5 so this is what we call as five tuple machine see so we have designed a model or machine which is characterized by q sigma delta qi and f and now we have formally defined all this we have formally defined all these terms so this is the model which is characterized by this five tuple okay and this model what we term as fsa okay finite state automata or we call it finite state model or finite state machine or more formally we say finite state automata and see automaton is singular and automata is plural so what we have done we have made a model and this model in our context is dfsa okay deterministic we'll see variations for now just consider that this is a fsa finite state automata so what is automata or what is finite state automata so finite state automata is a model for this see this is the model that we have drawn and automata will be a automata will contain several models several class of models we will see several other models also okay now let us move on okay friends so we saw this model okay and this this is the start state we denoted by this way and final state is denoted by this way and we characterized all those five tuples okay now let us draw the transition table okay so what a transition table will look like it will look like this
I say here P S symbol scan. Next, okay. So when we have what are our what is our initial state when we haven't scanned anything? Then we have Q S Q one in this case. Okay. So when we are at Q one, when we scan nothing, okay, absolutely nothing. What is our next state? Same only Q one only. And again, when we are at Q one, when we scan is one, again we remain at the same state only. So this is Q one. Again, when we are at Q one, when we get a zero, where do we go? Q two. And again, when we are at Q two, we can scan a one, so we'll remain at Q two. And when we are at Q two, we scan a zero, and we go at Q one. So generally, we do not write this. So we have seen one, two, three, four. Isn't it a mapping? So we have two states, isn't it? And we have symbols. How many two? So how many mapping we would have? Two into two, four. We would have get four rows. And that is what I wrote when I wrote this. Sigma is a mapping. Uh, delta is mapping from sigma cross Q, going taking you to another Q. See, this is sim sigma. This is the symbol. And this is these are the states, symbol, states. So for every, so for each state, we have to apply all the possible symbols and check whether we can, where we can go. So this is somewhat known as state transition diagram. We will see more complicated diagrams and we will see more complicated models when we advance. But for now, we have to make our basic concepts very clear. Okay. So this was the model. This is the state transition. Okay, now let me introduce you to a concept known as delta hat. Okay, I will use a concept of mathematical induction here. Don't worry, I will explain. So what this will mean? Okay, so we were doing uh, those transitions using table or using that model. Can we do it formally? So suppose we term delta hat as scanning a character we are at a state q and we have a scan nothing okay. so we remain at remain at q only let us say it q1 isn't it so this is our base case isn't it and what is our inductive case inductive case is like that suppose Let us write here delta. We have a we are at a state say Q and I write X A. Okay. So I know that up to this part, suppose I have a scanned X and X is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. X is this one, and a symbol A is coming after that, and A can be anything 0, 1, 0. So this is A and this is X. Okay. This is A and this is X. Suppose for instance so i know that up to this part where my transition will be or at which state i will be so i can write like this isn't it so finally we know which state at we are and i can write like this suppose say we get at qa state now we can again determine why. Okay, so this was the formal way of doing it. Now let me show you an example. Suppose I have a string 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay. So when I say delta hat and q1 is the even state and q2 is the odd state. I am at q1. Suppose I am at q1. And when I scan this, what will be our output? See, output will be like this. We are going to see what will be the output when I scan 0. So from Q1, when 0 will be scanned, we will get some state. Say, what will be the state? 
state will be changed we go to q2 and then this one so similarly we can do this do this and one by one we can reach at a final state isn't it so this was the way of doing it okay this was the formal way of doing it and this is known as the delta hat we have inductive you know this is not very uh, difficult just realize this is the formal way of doing it when we draw the model we do it intuitively and formally when we are going to do it in a pen or paper and we can do it like this okay we will solve examples using this okay for now i think your idea is clear now okay now let us proceed so what we will be doing is you know we will be designing a model m okay we have a model m and suppose l1 is a language and let me write like this what i mean is that when a machine m when a model m accepts a language l or solves a language l that language must be l1 means you will tell me okay we have the question that whether this l1 this l1 this is a language is accepted by this model or not is computed by this model or not so when we have a language so this is read as we have a model m and which is accepting a language or which is able to solve a class of problem this language is what we are checking whether a string belongs to this language or not and for that we draw a model so whether this is equal to this l1 or not getting my point say for example i i had an l1 that i defined suppose x belongs to 0 1 star and x has even zeros okay so what we will do we will design m and suppose we have a language and we have a language l we know a language l and we check whether the language accepted by this machine is this l1 or not is this l1 or not now let me give you a problem suppose i define a language l x belongs to okay so this is a problem this is a language and we have to determine we have to form a model such that x has even number of zeros and even number of ones so what we will do we will form a model we have to form a model according to this language and then the class of this type of problem will be solved by the model so do it for me if you can do it it is good if you can i will tell you the solution of this problem in the next lecture okay so guys this was all about uh, finite state automata okay we have different other models like uh, deterministic non-deterministic but currently we what we were discuss, discussing was deterministic in later stages we will differentiate between all those and will analyze all other concepts thank you for watching hope you have liked this video please like and subscribe our channel